Welcome to video 35 in our series on tensor calculus. In this video we're going to build on everything we've learned so far and develop a technique for finding the covariant derivative of a tensor of any rank. So far we've learned how to find the covariant derivative of an individual vector component. We've also learned how to find the covariant derivative of a product of vector components. Well, today we want to keep going and see what it means to take the covariant derivative of a higher rank tensor, such as the one you see here. Well, to do that, we fall back on something we analyzed back in video number 20, and that is the fact that it's possible to take any higher rank tensor and decompose it into a sum of vector products. Remember how this works. A tensor of rank R can be decomposed into n to the R minus 1 power terms, each of which contain R factors. In this case, that would be 3 to the first power, or 3 terms, of 2 factors each. Now we take the covariant derivative of both sides of this expression. And of course, because of the sum rule, that means we can take the derivative of each of the terms on the right-hand side and add them together. Okay, well now we'll expand all this out. The covariant derivative with respect to k of qij will be equal to the sum of each of these covariant derivatives on the right-hand side. Well, the first one is the partial derivative with respect to zk of the product ai xj. And we'll need a term for the upper index i which is gamma ik. We'll form a dummy index here for the a factor. So this will be a m and then uh, xj. So now we need a negative term for the lower index of j. And that will be gamma kj with this is a dummy index, a i and xm. Okay, and we do the same thing for each of the other two covariant derivatives. Next, we group these three terms together. These three terms together and these three terms together. Finally, we replace each of these expressions with their equivalents in the form of our second rank tensor. And this is the expression we've been looking for, the covariant derivative of a second rank tensor. Well, look how it works. First of all, we find the partial derivative of our second rank tensor. Then we add two terms, one with a contraction for the upper index, and it's a positive term, and one for a contraction of the lower index, and it's a negative term. Now, I'm sure you can see how closely related this is to the covariant derivative of a product of vector components. For example, if we're taking the covariant derivative of si tj, what would we do? We'd take the partial derivative of it, and then we would add two terms, one to form a contraction with the upper index, smtj, and another to form a contraction with the lower index, si tm. So it means that the rules for writing out these expressions are exactly the same for a second rank tensor as it is for a product of two vector components like this. The rules are exactly the same. And that's very good news because we don't have to learn a second set of rules for tensors of higher rank. Now it may be obvious, but let's go back and see how this generalizes for tensors of even higher rank. Well, first of all, what we'd uh, 
see is if we had like a third index here of, I don't know, T, uh, well, what would that do? Well, first of all, this expansion would now be for a tensor of third rank, which means we'd have an expansion of nine vector uh, products here, each of which would have three factors in it. So there would be another factor here with an index of T, and uh, so on throughout. That means that we'd have nine expressions here with three factors each. And as we expand these out, that means we'd need a third term out here in each case because we're dealing with a third factor. And then um, down here, we would have a third term as well with the, you know, there'd be another gamma factor down here because of the third factor and that would give us a third term out here. So this result generalizes all the way to any rank tensor that you want to work with. The rules are the same as they are for uh, finding the covariant derivative of a product of individual vector components. Well, I want to do the same thing I did in the last video by concluding with an illustration of the technique using a more complex example. So if we were going to take the covariant derivative of this uh, tensor, what we do first is to find the partial derivative. So we do the partial derivative with respect to z, what is it, k over here, of our tensor. And we wouldn't change a thing about this term. It's just t i j r s i. We always start with the expression in its original form. Now we're going to walk our way through each of these indexes. And at first glance, it looks like we're going to need five Christoffel symbol terms. But we notice that i is a contraction here. So we can skip any contracted indexes. Because if we were to work all these out, two of those terms out here would cancel out. So we can just skip them to begin with. All right, so we're going to need a term for j, r, and s. J is an upper index, so that's going to be a positive term. It's going to be gamma. We always have K in this position. And then we're going to have our tensor T, uh, I. Now, J we're going to use as a, um, we're going to do the contraction for the J index, so we're going to use an M here. And that means that M is down here. And then R, S, I. And the index that's left over is J, which goes right there. OK, next index is R. It's a lower index, has to be a negative term. So it's going to be gamma. K always goes first down here. Then we have our tensor, T, I, J. This time we're forming the contraction with the R index. So this becomes M. And this is M up here now. And then SI. And the index that we bumped is index R, so that goes right there. Last index is S, which means it's got to be negative because it's a lower index. Gamma. K goes first. Tensor is T, I, J, R. And now we're doing the contraction with S, so we need an M here and I. And the M is up here to complete the contraction. And then it's the index S that we bumped, and it goes right here, and we're done. So the process is very straightforward, and the expression almost writes itself. So by way of a recap, the first thing we did was to derive this expression as the covariant derivative of a second rank mixed tensor. It's simply the partial derivative of the tensor followed by two terms, one in which we contract the i index in this direction, and one where we contract the j index in this direction. We also noted that the pattern is exactly the same as if we were taking the covariant derivative of a tensor product, si, tj like so. We use exactly the same rules for uh, creating these extra two terms as we would were the expression this tensor product. We also noted that the process is extendable, that as we add more indexes to our tensor, we'll simply be adding more terms out here. 
And we uh, finally demonstrated that principle with a more complex example where we took a third rank tensor has five indexes, one of uh, which is a contraction here. So it's a third rank tensor. It's the partial derivative. Then we have a contraction related to the J index here, the R index here, and the S index here. And with that, you now have an understanding of how to find the covariate derivative of a tensor of any rank. Now in the next video, we're going to examine several very important properties of the covariate derivative.